Hello and welcome to Mel Make Stuff. My name is Melissa and in today's video we are going to be talking about how to choose colors for your color work projects and we're going to look at some swatches. This is the second video in my little color work series, so if you have not seen the first video yet, which was about how I organize my color work yarn stash, please go and check that out so that you have a little bit of context for this video. I also want to note that this is not going to be a video about how to physically swatch for color work, like how to do a swatch in the round or a swatch flat. There are plenty of resources on YouTube for that already. So today we are mainly going to be talking about how to choose colors for your color work project, depending on the complexity, how many colors you're dealing with. In general, and I always start at this point with my own projects, I will take a look at the original pattern and see where all of the colors fall on a spectrum from light to dark. Here's an example of one that has a light main color. So this light natural color that you see throughout is the main color here. This is Musa by Marie Wallen. This is from the Shetland book, which we're going to be talking about later as well. And then here is another example from the same book where we have a dark main color. From that point, then what I wanna do is look at all of the contrast colors. Is there a light, medium, and dark within those contrast colors? Are they all darker or lighter than the main color? And are there one or two contrast colors that seem to have more importance than the others? Like they are showing up more dominantly in a motif or something like that. So if we take Musa again as an example, you can see that within this motif here, we have a variety of both dark and sort of medium saturated colors. And these motifs are also showing up to my eye to be very blue uh, because of this medium blue, bluish green color in here. And so I would take note of that particular color that's being used there as one that will show up as visually dominant when you're looking at the overall piece. And if I like that, then I can keep the blue. If I don't like it, I can change that out. Another thing to keep in mind is that you are not limited by the types of colors used in the original project. Like if the original used a dark main color, you can use a light main color. Just keep in mind that you might need to sort of flip the saturation of those contrast colors. Let's look at an example of that. The sweater on the cover of the Shetland Trader Volume 3 by Gudrun Johnston is a great example of looking at a variety of different color combos. So looking at this, we can easily see which one is the main color or the dominant color, right? Here it is, the sleeves, we have these uh, larger sections on the body, and then we have this variety of contrast colors in here. So these contrast colors are also appearing to be arranged from light to medium dark, what I would consider to be medium dark. So obviously this color, this natural color in the middle is the lightest. Then we have, you know, a couple of sort of medium tan and a, a gray. And then we have a pop color right here with this orange in the middle. Here we have two other color combos for this sweater. So here we can see that there is a light main color here. And so the contrast colors that have been chosen are darker in order to provide that needed contrast in the color work. So we're going to start off by talking about the least complex situation where you have to choose colors for color work, which I'm considering one main color and then between one and four contrast colors. So when you're choosing your yarns for this, go for what you like first, right? Choose your main color. What color do you want to be dominant? What color looks good next to your face is a good way to, to start with that. And then choose other colors that are going to provide enough contrast with your main color. And the first tip here is that you often need more contrast between your contrast colors and your main color than you think you do. For my version of this sweater, here are the colors that I chose, which all look pleasant enough together. But when you look at it in the swatch, you can see that the dark brown that I had chosen as one of the original contrast colors is just a little bit too dark to give enough contrast against the dark green main color, the background color. When it's switched out for a slightly lighter brown up here, we can see now an acceptable amount of definition in this star and flower motif now. And just to show you how slight of a difference it really is, here is the brown that I ended up using next to this brown that was my original plan that was a little too dark. So 
a very subtle difference in that contrast color can really provide a lot more contrast in the finished garment. And the only way to really tell that is if you swatch. When you're swatching, if you've finished your swatch and you want to try out another color after the fact, you can actually just take your, your other color and duplicate stitch over what you've already done. So that would have been an option here as well. Moving on to what I would consider medium complex, that would be five plus colors with many small motifs. So more than just a couple different motifs, you can see here we've got a number of bands of different designs. So a lot of you will recognize this as a swatch for the Damiaka Lopa by Pinaguri. This is a really good example of one that you want to look at either Ravelry or Instagram to see lots of color combos and see which ones you personally consider successful versus less successful. So this is going to look different to everyone because it is a matter of personal preference. I have made two of these garments, so we're going to look at both of them. This is the swatch for my first one, and I chose a dark purple as my main color, a uh, sort of lighter lilac as my contrast color, which you can see in the ribbing up here, and that's my main contrast color, and then there are a variety of other contrast colors in here, right? Orange, gold, pink, and gray. After I had done this swatch, there were a couple of things that I decided to change out. One of them, which is barely visible because it is so low contrast, is that up here, right under this gold line, there is actually a one by one color work pattern between the gray and this lilac, which is just not appearing in any way. So I did change that out in the final garment. For these three middle motifs, I did like how they were coming out. I felt like I was getting enough definition so that you can easily see what the motifs are doing. But then the other thing I noticed, and this is the way the chart is written, so I am glad that I swatched this instead of just going for it on my, my actual garment, this first row, so this is once you get past the yoke and onto the body here, we have these fleas, the first row of fleas on the body is right in line with these points on this last motif in the yoke. And I wanted those to be offset. So I did fix that as well in the finished garment. So let's take a look at that. Okay, so here is my finished garment. And if I bring this up close, you can see because I switched out that gray for a darker color, one of the other darker contrast colors, you can now see that there is this little decorative one by one pattern here. And here you can see that this first row of fleas in the body is now offset from the points on the yoke. And I just think that that looks a little bit more pleasing to the eye. Taking a look at the swatch for my other version of the Damiaka Lopa, you can see that I am getting really good contrast in most of these sections, except for this one. And I have an entire video about the making of this garment, which I will link below in case you want to know more about what I did here. But this motif here, just because of how the colors are laid out in the pattern, ended up really not having a whole lot of contrast here. And you can tell, because I have outlined them with embroidery here, that there are little uh, rectangles within this motif. But once this is further away, there's just no way to really see that. There's not enough definition there. One option would have been to uh, switch it out for like this pink up here or a lighter color. And I did duplicate stitch over this to just try that out, but I didn't love it. And so I did end up doing some embroidery just to make that stand out a little bit more. So you don't have to follow the pattern to a T. Uh, that is something that you can do too. And now here you can see on the finished yoke, there are no real changes from the swatch other than continuing on with that embroidery to just help that little rectangle motif stand out more. So my process for choosing colors for something like this with around six colors is when I'm looking at that original pattern and I see, okay, where are the medium colors in that yoke? Where are the light colors? Where are the dark colors? And then if I'm changing colors from what was originally suggested, I'll try to slot them in in that same way. So if I have a dark green in the original pattern, but I want to use a dark blue, I'll sub it in for wherever that dark green was supposed to appear. That doesn't always end up working out, but most of the time it will get you to a point on your swatch where you can see then where you might want to switch things out for your final garment. So that brings us to the last category. How do you substitute yarns when you have a pattern that has a ton of colors, a lot of different motifs or motifs of mixed widths. So a lot of times you will see this in Marie Wallen's patterns, uh, very common to have both you know, 10 plus colors 
and motifs of varying widths. So I'm wearing a good example of this that I will show you. This is the Oak Cardigan by Marie Wallen. I also have another video about this. I will link below if you would like to know more about the, the finishing and steaking of this. So I used the original colors for this garment as recommended in the pattern, but I think this is a good illustration to see if I was going to substitute I would start by identifying the most prominent colors in each motif, which ones really pop out to you from some distance, and consider switching those out. So in this case, the ones that stand out the most to me are this sort of apple-y green that we see in this motif here, and again up here, the dark brown that we see here, and also this natural color, which is the background of this motif, and also on the cuffs. For me, visually, the most striking color in this whole garment, the one that I see the most when I'm looking at it, is this apple green. And so if I did not like that, or if I wanted to really change the look of this garment, changing that out to a pink or to a turquoise or something like that would really change the overall look of this. And then you could easily just sub in the colors approximating the original colors that are suggested in the pattern and get a different look. So now let's look at a less successful example of when I did sub in colors for a Marie Wallen garment and I actually don't think it worked all that well. The garment that we are going to talk about is the Yell pattern, which is from the Shetland book again. Here it is. So this pattern has 12 colors in it and for my version of this garment, some of my choices were successful and others weren't. So when I started looking at this, I knew that I wanted to substitute yarns entirely from my stash, so I decided on the main color and the main contrast color first, which is what's going on here in the largest section of the body. For the original, it looks like they used a charcoal gray and sort of a light natural, and I had a vision of charcoal gray and pink. So I swatched this section for gauge and to make sure I was getting enough contrast there, but I didn't swatch this. I just YOLO'd and that was uh, probably not the right choice. What I did originally was I sat down and I looked at all of these colors. I got real close. I, I went online to see if I could, you know, get a, a close view of what these colors really look like. And so when I'm looking at this, the parts of the design that stand out as dominant motifs to me are the ones that go around the neck band, which are also repeated here on the body. And then also, you know, this motif here and, and this motif are sort of the main ones in the body. And so I wanted to focus on first choosing the colors for this neck band since they're so prominent and then fill in the others. The other thing I did when I was looking at all of these contrast colors was to try to classify them into categories based on how light or dark they were. So I had like a light section, I had light medium, medium, and then dark. And so I had separated all of these original colors into those categories. And as I was choosing from my stash, I tried to slot them in accordingly. And so here is how this turned out. So I did not put the sleeves on this. I wanted to just leave it as a vest. So if we get up closer, I think that the things that I like about it are that I do have enough contrast up here. It's not super contrasty because I use this light oyster pink, which I think is the best Jameson of Shetland color ever and a charcoal gray from Harrisville Designs. I like the sort of softness of this. There's not super high contrast, but but there's enough that you can see that there's a definitive pattern, checkerboard-ish pattern here. And I also really like the colors that I chose for the neckband. I think they're not screaming loud, but there's enough definition. You can see that there's three distinct motifs here and the eye is able to identify that these three motifs in the body are the same as what's going on here. Now, the parts that I don't like so much. So this first motif here, I actually love. I love the combo of like this navy and pink and sort of blue. And so I was pumped, right? I was just going along doing, doing, this is knit bottom up. So this was my first motif I did. Then I got here and I added this teal. And what I did not really realize is that that teal was going to become very visually dominant in the overall look of the garment. And I'm not sure that I would have chosen that. I don't hate it, but I maybe wouldn't have repeated it again here, for example, and just left it here and here. And I feel like that would have not overwhelmed the look quite as much with like teal. Like when I look at this from 
a little bit of a distance, I definitely see a lot of that, that bright teal. Now, if I had swatched this section for color, it would have taken me some time, you know, at the beginning of the garment, because this is, this is a significant piece of knitting here to do as a swatch, but I would have been able to identify that in that case, you know. So I learned my lesson from this garment, and now I always <laughs> swatch for, for color specifically. I generally know what type of gauge I'm going to get with Colorwork Yarns at this point. It's going to be somewhere between 25 and 30 stitches over 10 centimeters, depending on what my needle size is and this type of yarn. So I'm mainly always swatching for color at this point and not for gauge. So we're going to talk a little bit more about exactly why this color pops so much, but we're going to do that in the next video. So just to give you a little bit of a sneak peek of the next video, we're going to be talking about these swatches, which are part of a project that I'm working on right now. So I did a lot of soul searching and studying color and existing color work garments in between what happened with the yell and making this sweater and on to my next project. And so I'm very excited about my current project and we are going to talk about the process of swatching for that in the next video. So I hope that you will come back to join me for that. Thank you so much for being here and I will see you next time. Bye!